hysterically reasonable. Nice young ladies just don't swim around rescuing people in the middle of the ocean and then flutter off into oblivion. Originally, I was going to play the PlayStation 2 game Evergrace, but when I started playing it, I ran into a little bit of a problem. The game is awful. Not awful as in, okay, I'll play to the end, but I won't have any fun while doing it. No, it was awful in the sense that I kept getting lost. Every single area was like a maze. So eventually I had to scrap it. But I still really wanted to play a fantasy RPG, so I started looking through my games and I found this little gem. So I believe it's time for that good old classic Oblivion, starring Tom Cruise. The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is a fantasy RPG made by Bethesda Game Studios in 2006 for the Xbox 360. Now when the game first came out, I had a friend who owned an Xbox 360 who would come over to my house and play the game. And since I only had a GameCube and an Xbox at the time, it was the coolest game I had ever seen. It was so pretty and nice and awesome! I loved it. I wanted it so badly, so much that I begged my parents to get a Halo 3 Xbox for Christmas. Not necessarily so I could play Halo 3, but so I could play Oblivion, which I was lucky enough to get. But that is looking at the game through extremely thick nostalgia goggles, and with this game pushing nearly a decade and Skyrim being out for four years, I can't help but wonder, is it any good anymore? Well, that's what I aim to find out. So you start off the game and Patrick Stewart explains the world using all of Tamriel's jargon, but nobody really pays attention, and we get to make our character. Well, first things first, we're in a fantasy world, so rules state that we need to play as a Khajiit. I, I mean, what's the point of going to a fantasy world if you're not going to be a cat person, am I right? So it starts off with us in prison for cat-related crimes, and then this dingus in the cell from across from us starts yelling a bunch of racial slurs. Wake up, kitty kitty. Does the kitty want it? Is the... No! That is our word! You are not allowed to use it! Anyway, after being berated for a minute or two by that smug dark elf, Emperor Patrick Stewart comes into my cell and starts flirting with me. You are the one from my dreams. Apparently some people want to kill Patrick Stewart, and the safest escape route is through my jail cell. So in addition to Picard escaping today, LMMO is on his way as well. I'm on my way from misery to happiness today. Uh-huh, uh-huh, a giant rat! So after bagging a few R.O.U.S.s and snatching up necessary catacomb inventory equipment, I run into Emperor Stewart again who tells me something about the villain of Aladdin and then promptly dies. And then I'm free. The world is my oyster. So I head on out, chop up some bandits, and it's pretty fun. But then I remember that I'm recording for a video, and then realize if I play the way I usually experience Elder Scroll games, we would be here forever. So I grab my sword, head off, and find Jafar, who tells me that we need an emperor with Patrick Stewart's blood. The bad news is, is that the Emperor's sons are all dead. The good news is that Patrick Stewart wasn't faithful to his wife, and there is an heir to the throne living in Kvatch. So that's where we're heading. And I would walk a hundred miles, and I would walk a few more just to be a man who walks a thousand miles to fall down at your Oh no, the city's been destroyed, and the only way into Gavatch is through the Oblivion Gate. I can't even walk around it, oh no. But no matter, I'm here to have fun, and let's face it, fighting hell spawn in a volcano-like environment of creepy spires and stealing sigils is pretty dang fun. After my fun is over, I go on into the city, but I should keep my eye open for a bed so I can level up. So inside the city, I find Martin, who said he'd love to be Emperor and everything. But first I should do a long quest to free the city of Kvatch so that Mama Norman's $27 from 2007 is put to good use. So I head into Kvatch and chop up some more demons and eventually the captain of the guard sends me in to save the count. And then I find exactly what I was looking for. A bed! 
dead! Now to sleep in a burning castle and level up. You cannot sleep in an owned bed. What, what, what kind of crap is that? Who owns the bed? Is it him? He's not even using it right now. He already looks like he's really comfortable. I mean, he's got that nice red pillow. Not to mention he hasn't moved in hours. After reporting that the Count isn't very good at sharing, the Captain of the Guard takes off his armor and gives it to me and walks away, even though there are still fireballs flying towards us. Well, after that, Martin is ready to abandon the wounded and afflicted of Kvatch without a priest and come to Jafar with me. But oh no, they're under attack and they stole Patrick Stewart's jewelry, which is about 75 of this game consists of. Should have been called Elder Schools 4, Jewelry Recovery Agency. So we take Martin to the castle where he'll be safe, and then they give me a katana and send me to the capital to find some books. The third book in the series, The Wide Window, is actually pretty easy to find. First we find a guy and tell him that the people who like to read that book also like killing emperors, and then he gives it to you. The miserable mill involves slithering through a sewer with Boris, crashing some guy's book club meeting, and I think it's really cool that Boris can actually die in this meeting if you mess it up. But I didn't. Nope, I just threw all of Angela's books into the lake to uphold justice. Now I take the books to Lizard Lady and she studies them, which gives me some time to have fun. For that, I choose to go to the Imperial Arena and kill some gladiators. Oh, and it was fun, but the book is finally translated, and it basically tells me where the location of the Mythic Dawn is. So I head to the mountains, and here's where I make another excellent plan that comes from playing the game eight years ago. You see, when you join the cult, they take all of your stuff because communism. I know this, and I actually killed a wolf outside their hideout and gave it all of my stuff. All right, Minda, take care of that stuff. I'll be right back. As for you, Mythic Dawn, have fun and choke on my 985 gold pieces of coin, you filthy animals. Gosh, dang it. So I walk in, and all I got to do is translate their cryptic BS, and I'm a member of their club. Dawn is breaking. A light shining through... You're barely waking, and I'm tangled up in you. Yeah! So I join, go back to Balto, snatch up my stuff, steal their book, kill their dudes, and head back to Cloud Ruler Temple, where I have more chores to run. Chore number one is kill some spies. So I kill the first spy, and then report to the nearby city's captain of the guard. I'm Captain Bird. Captain, captain Bird! Bird! Anyway, the super awesome and lovable captain tells me, I trust that you'll handle things appropriately. The less I know about it, the better. Oh, thanks, Bird. You always know just what to say to cheer me up. So, boom, I kill the second spy. Now what? I've got to get some Daedra blood. All right, so I go and I get Azura Star, but here's the thing. If I give Martin the sacred Azura Star, I lose it forever. Fortunately, I never updated Oblivion, so there's a neat little item cloning cheat in the game. Alright, Martin, take the star. The real star that definitely isn't a fake. Now what? I gotta go get some god blood? Ooh, that's a little tough because... But there is a way to get some. You see, there was an emperor who was so sexy that all the other gods decided to make him into one as well. So if I can get his armor, we can use a couple flex off of it to make the ritual happen. So I head on into some catacombs, fight some spooky monsters. In fact, I, I want to share an experience with you that was completely unique to my playthrough. While I was playing, I was listening to my iPod on shuffle to pass the time, and while I was on this crypt, the most cheerful song I own started playing, so fighting all the ghosts was something similar to this. No! 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 Oh, spooky ghosts! Oh no! Oh, no. What? What? Is that skeleton walking around? Oh, please! Please don't hurry! Oh! Oh! I got ghosts! It's my scoop! Oh, don't hurry! Please! I'm so scared! This is too spooky for me! This is three spooky find me! No! Oh, they're gonna kill me! I actually fight against ancient guardians of the Emperor, and then I switch my katana out for the dead bodyguard's katana because it obviously wasn't good enough to protect them while they were alive, and it also failed to keep me from chopping up their skeleton. Wait, why did I take that sword? 
Anyway, I get the armor and head back for my next quest, which involves me getting a great wizard stone. I never thought to see a great Welkin stone. As beautiful as all the old tales tell. But of course its beauty is a mask for its deadly power. HA! Sounds like they're talking about my ex-wife again! Okay, you lie. The final ingredient that Martin needs is a great sigil stone, and the only way to get one of those is to open several oblivion gates, which will cause an even bigger oblivion gate to open, which will put everyone in great danger, especially since Martin is on the front lines. But it's okay, because we have Boris, Joffrey, and Captain Bird. This will be the easiest battle yet. So we start. The Oblivion Gates open and we are immediately flooded by Daedric monsters of every shape and size. Boris and I double teamed this one guy and then I accidentally stabbed a member of the local militia and then the Great Gate opened. And it was at this moment that I realized, man, the main storyline sure is boring. I'm gonna go take some personal time. So I headed away from there and went to Shaden Hall. Fun fact about me, if I could live anywhere in video games, I would love to live in the beautiful city of Shaden Hall. I'd like to be in Oblivion, in Eastern Tamriel, in the Shaden Hall. So I start looking for a cool quest to do, and it appears that some woman has lost track of her husband. Oh, that has got to be terrible. I don't personally own one of those, but I bet they are really easy to misplace. So I find her and she tells me that her husband is like the best painter in the world or something, and then has me check his studio for clues. Well, I checked, and the next thing I know, Blue Skadoo Weekend 2! And I arrived in one of the neatest side quests of all time. I got teleported into a painting, and basically the painter explains that a lot of cool stuff and tells me to get a paintbrush back made from a goddess's hair. But I've got to wash out for the paintings of trolls, and to beat them, he gives me turpentine. This quest is so cool! In this area of the game, the ground and sky look like they have this cool Van Gogh aesthetic. The painter gives me some paint remover to make the paintings easier to kill. It's quests like this that truly make the Elder Scrolls games such a joy to discover. They should really consider making an MMORPG based in this universe. So I get the brush back and after exhausting all of my turpentine, I employ the ancient art of running away like a sissy coward to get back to the painter so he can paint a way out of this nightmare. Afterwards, he gives me an apron, and I reluctantly head back to the main story quest by heading into a swirling, huge abyss of torment and fear, fighting my way through droves of archfiends and eventually getting the Great Sigil Stone. Yeah, we did it! Nice work out there, Boris! Oh, we kicked their tail, right, Bird? Bird? Jafar? Oh gosh, no, oh no, oh no, no, Captain! Oh, Captain, my Captain! They got you hard too! I, I know he's a bad guy, and then he electrocuted Jasmine and Aelan, but he didn't need to die! And why they kill Bird? This is terrible! No! <laughs> to honor their memories. I, I shall give Joffrey's blade a chance to have revenge, and, and I'll use Bird's armor to keep me safe in battle. Okay, so I get a hold of my emotions and prepare for a vengeance quest, which involves tur Martin turning me into a philosopher's stone or something. I mean, I, I pass through the portal of truth or something, and I wind up in this pretty neat place. I meet a bunch of new friends, like this spooky guy, and we even got to 81% friendship. This guy did something, and I think I even leveled up. I just need to find a bed to sleep in. And wouldn't you know it, the game knew just what I needed and graced me with this bloody sacrificial altar. The coziest of places to curl up for a nap. Then we head in to fight Mankar Cameron. And you know what? The kingpin of this whole operation? I think I'll set the difficulty heighter for this. You know what? The kingpin of the whole operation? You know what? He was almost as easy to beat as Colonel Autumn. I beat him and the <clears throat> palace collapses and I get his $8,000 robe and I wear it to properly honor the hero. All right, all that's left to do now is crown Martin as King of Pride Rock. 
Oh yeah, and also banish the 50 foot tall physical manifestation of the Demon King Dagon from this mortal realm. And Martin does this by turning into a dragon and eating Dagon. Yeah, Martin, show him how snake-like you can be. Do it for Jafar. After the battle, Martin dies and that leaves only one person worthy to rule in his stead. Look at me, I'm the king of Cyrodiil. So that's the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion and I've got to say, I had a blast while playing it even though I forced myself to play the main storyline. The main storyline, by the way, took me 13 hours to complete, and I didn't even get to scratch what this game has to offer. I mean, it's got so many amazing quests, not to mention the Mages Guild, the Fighters Guild, the Dark Brotherhood, the Grey Prince, the Grey Fox, so many amazing things. And who knows, if this video gets enough views, I may take up Joffrey's Katana again and uh, take another slice at this game. <laughs> Hello YouTube, and thank you so much for watching this, and thank you for 1,000 subscribers. I, I, this, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I actually have a 1,000 subscriber video planned out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. It's one that I'm pretty sure a lot of you've been wanting to see. You know, seeing as how the top 10 Fire Emblem Awakening least favorite characters or whatever that video was has gotten so many views so i'm gonna i'm gonna do another top five list i was like this you know, you'll like it also uh check out my previous video if you haven't seen it princess debut i, I thought that video was phenomenal i thought it's one of my best yet okay no no not really but i dress up in a dress so if you want to go and take a screen cap of it and use it for like a uh, blackmail on me later th that's a, that's a possibility and i have the top 10 self-destructing enemies in video games video games that just blow themselves the kingdom come and uh the let's play channel i, I really want to do something for my banjo kazooie let's play and that's gonna require me to get my tax refund and the, I, I filed them at the beginning of the year. I don't know why the IRS is taking so long to get me my check. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe so you can check out more Heman Gaming videos when they come out. Bye-bye. Hi. <laughs>